Hi, I'm Tad Parker, and today we're here to shoot another video vignette in our series of The New Faces of Pine. Today I'm joined by Jeff Poor, the COO of Flagship Press in North Andover, Massachusetts. How are you, Jeff? Thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me. Uh, before we get into the substantive questions of the interview, I was wondering if you'd be able to give us a little bit of background about Flagship Press and the development of your business over the years. Yeah, I mean, we're a general commercial printer. We've been in business for 63 years. Uh, we have about 125 employees. We're truly a job shop. We do all sorts of work. A lot of education work, but a lot of general commercial printing. Uh, in, in our business is about 75% offset and 25% digital. And how long have you been a uh, Pine member? We've been a Pine member for 35 years, so it's been a long time. It's been a long association, you're right. And over those 35 years, as the face of flagship press has changed, the needs of uh, your services, our services to you, and uh, uh, the benefits that you're looking to pine for have changed. And I was wondering if you could tell me what some of those were and some of those are today. Yeah, I mean, when I think back of when we started with Pine, we, we probably used it as much for training our employees as anything else. It was, it was definitely, that's, that was probably the primary focus in the beginning. Mm -hmm. We still do that with Pine. We have our people do HR seminars, a lot of webinars online. Uh, but we've expanded that. We use Pine for their, they were able to save us some money in the credit card service area. And then last year was a big step. We went to Pine for our entire insurance package where they were able to save us about 20% over what we were paying prior to that. So uh, we recently had an issue with our insurance that required a claim and the, the, the new organization performed very, very nicely. Well, that's fantastic news. Um, as you develop your business plans going forward, uh, what services do you see that you'll need that you may not be uh, able to get currently that Pine might be able to help you with? One area that I was thinking about this last night and is how do we come up with the next generation of employees? Uh, this business, as everybody knows, is, is contracting, yet we're still going to have needs. I have an aging workforce. I have a lot of people in their 50s and early 60s that work for me that over the next 10 to 15 years are going to be looking to retire. And where do we come up with that next generation of, of workers? Because you know the trade schools used to do that, but they're not. That's probably one of the biggest challenges we're having today. Is is it, you'd think that with unemployment being what it is, it would be easy to fill positions, but some of the positions require special skills in our business that aren't readily available. And it's you know we're talking about how we're going to do that and whether we're going to try to work with a local, you know, try to work with a local school, but I also thought about Pine being an avenue to try to explore that as well. And do you think that part of the problem of attracting young people to this business is the fact that it's not viewed as having uh, a lot of uh, fashion, if you will, or? It could be, I mean, you know, but, you know, there's a lot of, I think what maybe some of the younger people don't understand is, is there's there's some still some very nice careers in this business. That particular initiative is something that's on the Pine uh, uh, docket, if you will, for development. And going forward, it's not only to try to create the pool of, of uh, people that we can go to to hire for our, for our members and, and uh, the industry at large, but also to convince them that there are good jobs in this industry and that the industry is not going away, it's just changing. It is. I mean, you know, the industry is definitely changing, but I, I, you know, I'm a firm believer in print, and I think that, you know, we're going to be here for a long, long time. And uh, it's in some different capacity, and, and maybe doing some other things as well as print mm -hmm. you know, in the future, but um, if you look down on my floor, there's a lot of printed material right now, and, and it's, I just don't see it, you know, I don't see it going away anytime soon. I think you're right. I think you're right. I think that, uh, uh, that it's been a great experience having flagship as a member of Pine going forward and that uh, on top of the services that you've mentioned, you're currently taking advantage of our, uh, our lean manufacturing training program, which is a relatively new service that has been offered. Yeah, we're actually having a meeting to discuss that next week. Uh, we're, we're just getting ready to start with that. We're hoping that we can identify a couple of areas in the plant to uh, focus on in order to 
get better at because yeah. you know we're constantly looking at how to save money and, and do things more efficiently and, and I think that you know the grant that Pine was able to acquire and, and allow us to participate in is going to help us be successful in that area. Well we're here to try to help you be successful and to uh, enhance your profitability if you will and so I'd like to thank you for being a member and also thank you for your time today. All right, well, it's, 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 you know, it's a pleasure being with Pine. I, I'm on the board, and I enjoy my experience working with the board, and I would encourage anybody that is in the printing business, the, 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 the things that Pine bring to the table are really helpful. And, and if, if you take the time to investigate, if some people don't even realize in some cases what Pine can do, you'll see that the value of the membership is, is such that it's really a no-brainer.